Hello, hello. Is anybody there? Are we live? <laughs> you can see the people here. Oh, we don't have to <laughs> No one's here yet. So okay. we'll just introduce ourselves. I'm Liz. And I'm Sarah. And we're the Seeker Sisters. We are also personal trainers and sports and nutrition exercise specialists. So today we're going to be covering some of the frequently asked questions, things that people have posted in the 30 day challenge group um, for the free January fitness challenge, which you can still sign up for our registration closes tomorrow. We will put a link in the comments section below for you to join us. We would love to have you join us. It's 30 days of free workouts, recipes, and a tracking calendar, plus tons and tons of support from both us and the people in the fitness challenge group, which oh, yeah. is all women. So, mm -hmm. You can ask all your lady questions in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> let's just start going over. We categorized the questions that you guys started asking. And let's start going over some just general challenge guidelines. Um, so the last few days we had you track your calorie intake, and I think this is really eye-opening for a lot of you because you might find you're snacking a lot or – you were eating way less than you thought, you were eating way more, and we kind of want you to post about that in the Facebook group, and let us know, what did, what did you take away from that? Did you notice some habits you were doing that you didn't notice before? Are you noticing you're not eating enough? Uh, I think that was a big one that we saw a couple of times. Um, what else? Yeah, not eating enough is a huge one. You want to make sure that you first of all, calculate your BMR, which stands for basal metabolic rate, and that's the absolute very minimum <laughs> calories that you need every day just to stay alive. So that accounts for things like your organ function, your digestion, mm -hmm. brain activity, your heart pumping through your body, all those things you absolutely need to eat food for. And anyone who is finding themselves under about, you know, 1,200 calories or so, that's not enough food, so calculate your BMR. We posted how to figure it out in the group, but we'll post it again for you. And then on top of that, you add in the calories burned per day, and that's what, that's in general, a good estimate of where you should be shooting for your calorie count. But yes. we don't want you tracking this every day. This was yes. just in the beginning to see where yeah. you're at, see what maybe you're missing out on, and really just giving yourself that information so that you can track for a few days and say, okay, here's where I'm at, and this is what I need to do to get where I want to be if I'm not eating enough, or maybe I'm eating too much, or maybe I'm not going on my walks like I should. Um, it's really all just about consistency and making sure that you're getting enough calories every day and that you're getting in your daily activity if you're sitting a lot. We sit at the computer a lot, so we know how that goes. We always try to get up and move throughout the day, go on a walk, just whatever we can throw in to get up and stretch and move and all that. So moral of the story, don't continue to calorie count. We don't recommend mm -hmm. it. It will dry, it will, it may not. Maybe you're like a robot and you like <laughs> numbers, but for the rest of us humans, I know when I was doing that, it freaking it's like drove me soul crazy. It's sucking, I don't know. It, it drove, drove me nuts. Yeah. It's not a long-term solution. Maybe it works in the short term. I know it did for us. But in the long term, rest of your life, do you think you're going to calorie count and track all of that? I don't think so. It's just not realistic. So Nobody's going to want to be your friend if you do. <laughs> it's like you're the calorie you're like, whoa. Yeah, so we guy. want you to just track it for a couple of days and see where you're at and then kind of just take that and go where you need to go. Okay, so another quick note on that. We also don't necessarily want you to weigh yourself or judge no. your progress based on your weight on a scale. Yeah, and I here's do. why. Because if you've done our challenges before, you know that this is about fat loss, not necessarily weight loss, because your body is made up of both body fat and lean muscle mass. So lean mm -hmm. muscle mass is like your muscles, your organs, your bones, all of that other stuff. And then body fat is purely body fat. And we're playing with the ratio. So obviously we want less body fat and more lean muscle mass. And a common confusion is that people think that muscle weighs more than fat. That's not true. One pound of muscle weighs the exact same amount as one pound of fat. Mm -hmm. but they take up different amounts of space in your body. So say you have, you know, like a 25% body fat ratio. When you start to drop the body fat and your lean muscle goes up, 
um, you're going to become smaller and leaner and tighter. Yep. Does that make sense? Thanks Plus, everybody. again, it's it's the numbers game. You know, do you want to be playing that the rest of your life? I don't think so. It, does it really matter how much you weigh? What does that really even mean? It's just a number. It's more about the way you look, the way that your clothes fit, all of those. So that's why we want you to track your measurements, take your photos, all those more visual things because you might actually see the scale go up, but your measurements are going down because you're getting smaller. You're putting muscle on, you're getting rid of fat. So that's where we're like, don't weigh yourself, don't get caught up in that numbers game, it really doesn't matter. Also, yeah, your weight can fluctuate up to seven pounds in a single day based on water weight, you know, how much you ate that day, all those type of things. So if you gain a pound or two, Tomorrow, don't don't, freak out. don't sweat. You're, <laughs> you're just fine. That's normal. You're a human and you're alive. That's what. Especially mean. as women, it really depends on your time a month. All of that, like you can go up and down, up and down. So, again, we just really don't recommend going by how much you weigh. Yes. If anything, go by your body fat percentage if you can, or your measurements, your before and after photos, how your clothes fit, and how you feel. Okay. So those are a couple of quick, you know, housekeeping type issues. Mm -hmm. Also, for the days that you don't have workouts, a lot of people have been asking, what are you supposed to do? Again, if you want to do, you know, go take a class, feel free to do so. If you want to try the workout again, go right ahead. But we definitely want you to try to fit in a 20 to 30 minute walk every single day, even though it's not on the calendar every day. Um, we still, we both do this every day and mm -hmm. think it's really important for your health. But we do realize that we live in California where it doesn't snow. So if it's snowing where you live, yeah. you know, do what you can do to 20 minutes of some kind of cardio, just get your heart rate up a little bit, whether that's like putting in a DVD and doing some other kind of class or going to a class or, you know, just stretching anything to get yourself moving, get the blood flowing. And as we get towards the end of the month, you're going to have something pretty much every single day that you can mm -hmm. do. So like this first couple of days in this first week or two, they're going to be a little bit less um, intensive because we want to ease you into it. For a lot of you, you haven't worked out in quite a while. So mm -hmm. if you're, again, if you're really sore, that's another question that we saw a lot. Um, you want to make sure you're hydrating, foam rolling, stretching, all that good stuff. And then really? don't, sit still okay if you're yeah. sore and you sit still you're it's just gonna, worse. it gets worse <laughs> or it doesn't get better faster yeah, you gotta move i know it the the in, your inclination is to sit still because it hurts yeah. but don't sit still mm -hmm. okay and then the last thing is always make sure you're hydrating getting enough water you're sleeping mm -hmm. getting anywhere from seven to eight hours of sleep because that is when your body is recovering and repairing itself it's very very important and underlooked in the fitness industry but it's one of the most, the biggest things in addition to stress, try to do like stress relieving activities, like reading a book or taking a bath or just like having, mm -hmm. you know, some me time. Yeah, I take a bath like every day and we really prioritize sleep. That's like number one thing for us. We make sure we're getting seven to eight hours every night and if we don't, you'll probably find us taking a nap on the couch or something. <laughs> No, we don't really nap. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't time that. But I'm just saying it's really important. So make sure you're getting in your sleep because that is one of the biggest things that will make you feel so much better every single day. Okay, so let's get into the actual questions that people posted. Veronica says, um, this is again a couple more like housekeeping items. Veronica says, can I see... Um, where can I see the videos for the full routine one and routine two? Routine one is posted on YouTube already, and we will release the videos as you need them. So mm -hmm. we're not going to blast them all out, you know, in the first week so that you just get overwhelmed and don't know what to do. We will release them as they come out on the calendar. Mm -hmm. So routine two is not yet up. It will be next week. Yes. And yoga is on Tuesday, so we'll be releasing that video. We'll always give you the video the day before, so then if you want to watch it or preview it or whatever, you can do that. So. The yoga video will be out tomorrow, Monday, and then next week on um, probably Sunday. So in a week from today, you'll have routine number two. Yeah. So check there. We'll also post it to Facebook as well as a printable routine in case you want to save that on your phone. We've been starting to do that for you guys lately too. So next one. I'm not. Oh, make sure you subscribe to YouTube because that's how you'll be notified that a new video is up. Okay. Next one was Lisa. I'm not getting the workout for today. Am I supposed to get a new email or what? So this one, we aren't emailing you every day. There was a lot of info up front where we were sending out emails pretty much every day. There is a blog post, the most recent blog post on our website. It just says like new year weight loss challenge deets. That has all the details. We literally just copy pasted all of the emails that we've sent out. So if you've missed any emails, 
We have gotten a lot of emails where a lot of you have, and we're just directing you there. So if you still haven't gotten the emails we've sent out so far, the last one we sent was on Friday, you can go there and we'll just constantly update that throughout the challenge. So if you're not getting the emails, they will be there. Also, when we do send out an email, we'll post literally, there's a way for us to do when we send out an email to send just a link to you guys with the email in it. So we'll post that link in the Facebook group and it'll literally be the email that we send out. So, okay. And if you're not, if you're still not getting emails, make sure um, you check your spam folder, make sure contact at supersisterfitness.com is added as a contact on your list and perform a search in your inbox. And if you still don't get them, feel free to email us and we will do our best to help you. Okay. Next question. These are going to go into the workout questions. Um, as far as the actual workout, Shelby asks, does anyone know approximately how many calories burned? I know they vary based on work input and body weight. I was just looking for an approximate range. You're right, Shelby. Depending on how much you weigh, how old you are, um, how hard you're working in the workout, it's all going to be different. But I would say in general, depending on God, it's hard to give a range because everyone's so different. But I would say anywhere from like 200 to 400 calories. I would say on average, people are going around 250, 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like we said, these workouts in the beginning are a little bit easier. You are going to get high intensity interval training, Tabata drills later on in the challenge, which you will probably burn more and burn way more calories after, which we also have a video going to explain to you why you should be doing HIIT training. Um, so yeah, it really varies. And again, we don't want you to really get caught up in the numbers game. More importantly is how much you're moving, how much you're eating, all Being of consistent. That. Yeah. So just make sure you're getting the workouts done. Don't fret too much about that part. Mm -hmm. Um, Amy says, what is the longest time we should wait in between circuits? Do we have to get to three sets and when do we know when our bodies are done? Great question. Um, I did this workout yesterday at the airport. Some of you saw my picture. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't take any rest between sets. Um, but I do have a, quite a bit of experience We're very in my belt. So, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't take any rest. I just went right back through the circuits. Feel free to do that. If you feel like this is easy for you, you can also add weights to some of those moves. Um, but if you're uh, just beginning, then no more than 60 seconds, I would say. I don't typically recommend doing like one set at a time, like one at breakfast, one at lunch, one at dinner, spreading them out like that. That's just not gonna be as effective as doing it all together. Agreed. Um, but if that's the only way that you can fit it in, I mean, it's better than nothing. So that's what I would recommend for that. And then how do you know when your body is done? Well, your body is gonna give out, uh, well, your mind, I should say, is gonna give out a lot sooner than your body. So you're gonna think you're too tired to do it. You're gonna experience that um, wanting to quit and just push through it. Uh, how do you know? I mean, as long as your form is good, as you're long as you're safe, safe yeah. then you can push through it, then yeah. push through, girl. Yeah. Go get it. Okay, Kristen says, wondering how you both schedule your days, food, workouts, other activities, etc. So we're a little different, uh, but still kind of the same. We both wake up really early, and I always usually go straight to the gym or do some kind of exercise first thing in the morning and get to work, and later in the afternoon I'll take a break, maybe when I'm done with work, and go on a walk. And food, I always, I personally, this is just my personal choice, and we do also get this question a lot. I don't eat before I go to the gym. That's just something I'm not hungry when I wake up. I think that's because I have been eating the same amount of food consistently for a long time. That's just what works for me. I'm not saying that this is going to work for you to each their own. Sometimes I might wake up and be hungry, so I'll have a snack before I go, but I don't really like food sitting in my stomach when I'm working out. And that's just a general rule that you should probably wake at least 30 to 60 minutes before you work out if you just ate something. So I like to go on an empty stomach, and then I come back and have breakfast and schedule my day from there. So breakfast, lunch, I have a snack, and then dinner. Um, for me, if I don't make it to the gym in the morning, I usually go around lunchtime. Same thing, I don't like to have food in my stomach, so I'll wait. If I just had lunch, like I'll wait, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, um, just so that I don't feel like there's food in me. Yeah, you um, don't really want to have that feeling. <laughs> but we do. <laughs> We work on our own schedule, so like we'll schedule clients or classes um, throughout the day, and then we also work from home on all this stuff for you guys. So our our lifestyle or our typical day's activities are going to be a lot different from people who have like a full time job where they're going in 
sitting in an office all day. So really just find what works for you. I prefer to work out in the morning. I think that's the best way to get your day off to a good start. Agreed. But it really doesn't matter much as long as you get it done. Consistency is more important. Okay, moving on. Modifications for the workouts. I have quite a few questions about this. So we're just going to preface this whole situation with the fact that we are not your in-person trainers. We are online. So we can't evaluate your conditions. We can't give you specific one-on-one -on -one advice because we don't know you. We would need to run some fitness tests, things like that. So just a disclaimer, this is general educational advice mm -hmm. and you should always consult with a trainer in your area, a physical therapist, or your doctor mm -hmm. for answers to your questions in this regard. But as far as education, let's get down to business. Um, let's see. Hannah says, after routine one, the tendonitis in both my knees flared up. Are there extra precautions I should be taking to keep that from happening? Um, Abby also says, what do you recommend for someone who's not very flexible or mildly injured? Tendonitis, arthritis, weakness, or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. To be able to do body weight training successfully. These two questions are very related. Um, and that's a great question. A lot of people have knee problems. There was somebody else, so, Yolanda, yeah. said that too. How do I do lunges, squats if I have knee problems? A lot of people have knee problems, especially with women. Um, and when I worked at the physical therapy clinic in Santa Monica that I was at for a couple of years, uh, we saw that all the time, like knee injuries, very a ton, especially among runners. And, and she used to too, yeah. yeah. She used to have knee problems. I, I used to wear problems, a brace. So. I wore a brace for yeah. when it's I was It's very running. common for women, so. The reason typically, I mean, I can't say one definitively one way or another for you, mm -hmm. but the typical reason that people experience knee pain is not actually due to anything wrong necessarily in the knee, the problem originates in the hip because your glutes are not strong enough. So what happens is instead of that impact or um, the load being loaded into your glutes, the large muscles in your hips, uh, it goes into the knee joint, which is a very small, compact area of your body. It's not, those tendons and ligaments are not designed to bear that kind of load. So it can even happen in your hip joint like it did with me. I wasn't, I didn't have much muscle mass or strength there. So I used to also be a runner and had a lot of hip problems and hip pain. And I found once I did strengthen my glutes, my legs, the pain went away. Yeah. So number one, first and foremost, is strengthen the glutes. A couple of things you can try. If you've ever seen resistance bands, they come in a circle. We call them circle bands. You can put those around your legs um, and do... Right above the knee. Yeah, right above your knee, and you can do like a clamshell. Like a clamshell, side line. You're going to lay a log like this, and then do like side line clams, okay? I'm not doing a good With the resistance band right above your knee. That's a great one. What else? Bridges, lying on your back, and doing hip lifts. We've done a few build the booty workouts. There is, yeah, a YouTube video we posted, what, like two weeks ago. There's three moves for your booty. And that is in there if you want to see how you do a bridge and eventually you can even add weight to it once you get stronger. Yeah, and then the last thing, first and foremost, always pain-free range of motion. So if you're experiencing knee problems, really make sure you're pushing your hips back behind you, you're pushing your knees out so that you can turn your glutes on and make sure all of, make sure you're firing the glutes. Turn the glutes on, man. Yeah. Um, what else was I gonna say about that? Oh yeah, and then just don't go as deep. Don't go like full mm -hmm. squat. Just go where you can go, maintaining good form, tight core, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And really focus on the muscles. Think about where you're trying to strengthen. So your glutes, all of that. If you visualize it, you actually connect more with those muscles. And eventually, you'll be able to really feel it and really be able to squeeze those muscles. So typically, it takes around 8 to 12 weeks to build up. It's what that what she's talking about, that mind-to-muscle connection is called proprioceptive awareness. And it mm -hmm. takes eight to 12 weeks for your brain to connect neural pathways that actually fire the full range of muscle fibers in any given muscle. So it's gonna take some time to develop that. And that's a minimum, it can take even more than that. Cause I know for us, it took us a long time with certain muscles like glutes or your lats to finally get that feeling of like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And one day if you haven't had that feeling already, you'll totally get it and you'll be like, oh, that's awesome. So yeah, so I guess the main points from that is pain-free range of motion. Just don't do the full range of motion, do what you can do without pain. Um, see your doctor, obviously, first and foremost, make sure that this is even safe for you to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, things like sideline clams and bridges are great to build up the glutes. And those are all squat free. Okay, moving on. Amanda wants to know alternative moves for the tricep dips and pike push-ups. 
She said they were impossible, and she had to improvise and substitute the dips with five-pound weights and did the push-ups standing on tiptoes against the door. Amanda's last name is Smart, and this is Smart, Amanda, because yeah. you nailed it. Way to go. This Yay. is exactly what we would have had you do. Uh, we would have taken the load off of your wrists, and we would do overhead tricep extensions. Mm -hmm. We can also do kickbacks. Okay, so that's perfect. Just add the weights in there. And then eventually over time, you want to progress to maybe doing – you know, small range of motion dips and then progressing up to full range of motion dips. And then for the push-ups, modification, yes, would be to do them standing against the wall, get up on your toes nice and high, hands in line with your chest, and then press as low as you can go. And then over time, you're going to move your hands down, 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 down. Or maybe until, use a chair, bench, too. That's what I mean, like, you're moving levels. So you're here, then maybe a chair, then maybe a step, then maybe one day full push-up. And, yeah, definitely. So you're changing the angle of your lever. And the more parallel you are with the ground, there's more um, force to overcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so great job. Uh, next step, Nailed it. Kate says, pointers on pigeon. I can't have my shin parallel to the top of my mat without having my butt off the ground. To get my booty on the ground, I have to bring my foot in towards my inner thigh. I still feel the stretch, but am I compromising anything by not having my shin parallel? And the answer is no, and that is exactly what you're supposed to do. If you have tighter hips or glutes, just bring your shin in closer towards your hips. That's perfect. Eventually, you'll be able to get your leg parallel with the top of your mat. So that's a good question because it's actually in the yoga video. If you're not sure what we're talking about, what a pigeon is in yoga, you'll see that this week. So yes. that's a great, great question. Yes. Um, Sandra or Sandra, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, I know you have this upcoming hip operation. Make sure you consult with a physical therapist because you have a special condition. Uh, we don't want to get involved with that <laughs> for legal reasons. Um, you definitely need to talk to a physical therapist about how to strengthen your hip without, you know, exacerbating your current injury. Mm -hmm. um, but then you also had some questions about meal prep and breakfast. So we'll get into that again in the nutrition part. All right, moving right along. I think that's it we had for workouts, yep. right? Yeah. All right, next up, Annie says, I'm noticing a lot of the common posts on low self-esteem or self-confidence, and I believe part of fitness or weight, weight loss, loss and being successful at them, you need to have those characteristics. So I would be very interested in hearing your take on how to develop more confidence or gain higher self-esteem and your thoughts on why they're so important. This is very important. Our number one tip is self-development. Brian Tracy, we love Shalene Johnson, if you haven't heard of her already. Uh, who else? Tony Robbins. Those are some of our, few of our favorites. You can listen to things online if you don't have time to read, or podcasts are a great option. On YouTube, so many of these people have their audiobooks on there for free. I don't know if that's legal, but you can go and just search their names or whatever. Uh, we also like Brendan Burchard. So a lot of the time you'll find us in the morning listening to something motivational to get our day going, to give ourselves those positive thoughts. And that's our really the biggest thing we can say. That is what has totally transformed the way that we feel about ourselves and the way that we act out in the world and has given us that positive outlook on life. And honestly, it wasn't until we started reading and listening to positive messages that we were able to build up our self-esteem. So that's our number one tip. We'll actually post a few links in the Facebook group if you're interested of some of our favorite things to listen to, to read, our favorite books, all that kind of stuff. Anything else, Liz? Anything to add to that? One? I'm just trying to make sure that the stream is going well because it says bad. <laughs> Uh, and I wanted to enable comments so people could ask us for Q and A's. Um, Why is it saying bad? Uh oh, uh oh, are we in trouble here? Uh, I don't know. Let's keep moving on because I don't want to keep people waiting. Um, and I'll try to figure it out as you're answering things. How can okay. I set realistic expectations? For example, what are expectations for a 30-day challenge? Great question, Sarah. I know I need to lose about 30 pounds. How did I? How do I set a realistic expectations and goals, both long and short term? So one month is not very much time mm -hmm. as far as fat loss goes. Mm -hmm. Healthily, you can lose, on average, one about to one two. to two pounds per week. So that's only maximum of eight pounds, pounds per this month. Week. Yeah, or this month. This <laughs> month. This week. This that would be like crazy. <laughs> but it, you know what? You may see yourself having, once you start changing your diet and eating healthier, you might have initial more rapid weight loss, which is often just water weight and maybe getting rid of some of the stuff that has just built up in your body over time. 
Um, after that, yes, you can expect one to two pounds per week. So that was that would be what I would set your goals off of. So if you have 30 pounds to lose, say maybe you can lose four to eight this month. And I would use a range because you don't have a certain number that if you don't get to that number, like you're going to be disappointed or something. I would have a range, maybe shoot for five pounds this month. And then as things go on and you get more consistent and you kind of get in the rhythm, maybe next month you could say, okay, I'm going to shoot for six and feel really confident. I can lose six pounds this month. And so if you have 30 pounds to lose and say you're losing five pounds a month, so that's six months. It's really not that long in the scope of your life. A lot of our dogs and screens and toys over here. Hey, oh, yeah. I found a group chat. Wait, can you guys see if I type this? I don't know if you want to see a dog too, but. Okay, here's Liz's dog. This is Peanut. This is the one that was squeaking the toy a minute ago. Uh, All right, if you have other questions, feel free to post them in the chat. I think I just enabled that for you. Um, moving along. Uh, and then, well, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, moving along, Abby, where did you get your motivation or drive when you first started? What are your tips for being consistent and to beat the negativity, self-sabotage? So this goes back to self-development, reading, listening to positive messages, because really what you're surrounding yourself with does influence you, whether you think it or not. So what you're watching on TV, what you see on the commercials, what you see when you're driving around, that's why they always put food on TV. It, it's stimulating. It like gives you like, mmm, that looks good. I want to go eat that now, <laughs> even though you might not be hungry. So the things that you're watching and seeing around you really have an influence. Biggest tip, read positive things, listen to positive things, stop paying attention so much to the things that you don't want in your life. Our motivation came from watching our dad uh, struggle with a lot of health problems, and I know this is a similar story to a lot of you out there. Uh, he, when we were in third grade, oh, I was in third grade, she was in first grade, had a heart attack and almost died, and that was scary as a kid to see, and then he stopped smoking and started trying to, like, take better care of himself, but then again, when we were in college, he had to get, like, a triple bypass surgery, and he's then, had a couple heart stents, it's, he's been in and out of the hospital our whole life, and that's been really hard to watch. Yeah, and he also, when I was a junior in college, had, um, bulge disc. Yeah, he had, it it pinched his spinal cord, so he became paralyzed from the waist down, mm -hmm. and that was really, really hard for our family. Um, and I think that was a turning point for me where I was like, okay, I have to do something different because I don't want that in my yeah. story. Like, I don't... And as much as he did become healthier versus, like, us being really little, we still grew up on fast food and junk food, and they didn't really know anything about nutrition. They didn't know better. Um, so he never really tried to change his diet that much. He has now that he's older, but... Still, you know, food. So that's our story. I yeah. don't want to go too much into it. You can read more at, at supersisterfitness.com. But yeah, in general, I think it's really important the people you surround yourself with. And that's why we continue to do these free challenges because of the community and the support that mm -hmm. all you guys give each other and give us and we give you. And it's just really nice. So support yourself more with um, supportive people. Okay, Trisha says, what's the best eating guideline? Oh, we're moving on to nutrition. Yes. Okay. Uh, as in when. So she's wanting to know, like, how often, every two to three hours, even if you're not hungry, or just when you're, or just eat when you're hungry. So, again, this is all personal preference. We usually eat every three to four or five hours, you know, and that's just what works for us. Uh, I would say just eat when you're hungry. That's kind of what we go on. We don't run out like, okay, I'm on a strict schedule and every two hours I have to eat because we used to do that. And again, that's something that for us really wasn't realistic long term. Say, you know, you just ate something and then your friend calls you up and asks if you want to go like get lunch and you're like, oh, I just ate. Like, go and have a salad, you know, or whatever. Um, there's no one better way to do it. So it's really what works for you. If you hear, you'll hear a lot of people, hey, why done? <laughs> You'll hear a lot of people um, say that eating every few hours will boost your metabolism. That is not true. not true. One thing it does do, though, is it helps to regulate your blood sugar level. And so that is a good benefit. Yeah. And if you wait too long and you get like super hungry and you're like starving, you're more likely to eat way more than you actually need to eat. So that's why people recommend eating smaller meals every few hours. That way you're never getting like that ravishingly hungry where you feel like you want to eat everything in sight. So yeah, but don't get confused because it's not doing very much to your metabolism at all. There's no scientific evidence to support that theory. It's true. Okay, moving right along. 
Brooke says, what are your opinions on whole wheat pasta, brown rice, et cetera? I know some people were questioning, and that's one thing I would love to get more insight on. Well, tomato, tomato, Brooke. Yeah. I mean, we're, we, we don't really say either way. I mean, it, it's okay. There's not that many nutritional benefits to eating pasta, but if you need some extra carbohydrates in your diet, it's a good way to get it. The one problem we have with pasta is that if you look at the back and the serving size, it's usually half of a cup to a cup maybe, and it's like two to 300 calories, and people often eat at least two or three cups of pasta. A cup is pretty small when you're eating pasta, so that's our one thing. If you are eating it, just beware of the serving size and how much you're actually eating. It's really easy to overeat, and then you're not really getting any nutritional benefit from it. We always believe in eating as many fruits and veggies as possible. So if you are eating some pasta, pair it with a bunch of veggies and then it'll be way bigger and you'll feel more full and then you are getting those vitamins and minerals and fiber and all that that you need. I prefer brown rice over pasta and I prefer quinoa over brown rice. So that's kind quinoa. of where it's awesome. Quinoa is a superfood and it has all kinds of, it has protein in it, it has all kinds of benefits. So that's kind of where we fall on that. Not, no food is ever bad, okay? No. So just get that out of your head right now. That can lead to weird ways of thinking about food. Food is fuel, and some fuels are just better at doing certain things than others. But nothing is ever bad. Don't get into that trap. You can um, eat all of those things in the right portions. So somebody else asked us to give just a brief overview on nutrition. Our philosophy is plant-based. So as many fruits and veggies as you can get in, you don't need to count those. And plant-based does not mean vegetarian no, or vegan. For those of you out there getting a little confused, <laughs> the Learn Meal Guide is not a vegetarian meal plan. There although. are eggs and chicken. It can be adapted and to, yes. if you are vegetarian, you can adapt it. And if you're not vegetarian, you can adapt it. But you may notice that it's maybe less meat or eggs or whatever that you're eating right now. And that's because we really want you to focus on getting as many plant foods with all first, the, first the vitamins and, and minerals and all that yeah. stuff you need to be alive and feel alive and feel your best. And that's the way that honestly, you're going to be able to maintain your weight loss effortlessly. Like you don't ever have to worry about the calorie counting. That's why we say, I like, don't really worry about that because if you're eating the right way, you're, you don't really need to count calories. Yeah. Oh, basic nutrition info that I definitely want to cover is again, the BMR basal metabolic rate that's your minimum needed if you were to just basically sleep all day or sit on the couch all day and do nothing mm -hmm. um so never drop below that number it's uh and then we'll post again the calculation for how to figure that out for yourself uh next up is how to meal prep and ideas one thing we do all the time is when you go to the store and buy fruits or veggies we come home and chop it up right away and you can put it in a Ziploc uh, Tupperware or even just in a bowl. So it's literally right there in front of you when you open the fridge. So instead of going into, say, your cabinet and getting something that might be like a cookie or something unhealthy, you can open up your fridge and it'll be the first thing you see, eye level, right in front of you, prepped and ready to go because you're hungry and you want something to eat and then you won't be tempted by the less unhealthy things. So that's our number one tip with that. And then you can bulk cook like quinoa or rice or whatever else you're eating chicken all that someone kind of stuff. posted uh those eggs in little baking cups. oh the little That's potatoes yeah those are so good we've done that before and you can chop up veggies and stuff and put them in there too you can store those and have them grab and go i personally don't like to prep any meals past like two or three days yeah. in advance it's because like it gets gross, gross. and you don't really like, want to eat it then it's not like appetizing you're like force feeding yourself so yeah. you guys can continue to share your meal prep um, and recipe ideas in the forum. You're doing a great job. Oh, and one other thing we really like to do, and you may be wondering what we're drinking here, uh, is to take bananas, peel them first, and then put them in, chop them in half and put them in a Ziploc baggie. Then you can put them in the freezer, and then you can have them for smoothies. It's really easy. Just throw it in. We love drinking smoothies because there's no prep really needed. And then just get, like, some frozen berries. So this is, like, a couple of frozen bananas and some frozen berries just blended up. And it's super filling. Super yummy, hydrating, hydrating, often. really delicious. And ripe bananas are better than non-ripe bananas. Yes. Just FYI, everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sassy, what up? She's clean eating Sassy on Instagram. Oh, she has sweet. a great account. Go follow her. It hey, Sassy, tons of awesome recipes. <laughs> How much water do you recommend, or do you 
typically drink in a day. I've been drinking a gallon a day. And I feel great, but I'm never hungry. So this uh, is a big one. A lot of people aren't drinking enough water and we recommend at least two liters a day. Uh, a gallon, sure, that's great. We probably drink a gallon a day where we don't really track, but especially when you're drinking things like smoothie or getting a lot of water, water content. But the minimum recommendation is for every pound you weigh, you wanna drink half of that in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you wanna drink at least 75 ounces of water per day. That's a minimum. All right, moving on, moving on, moving along. Here we go. Okay, Jane says, how long after eating a meal should I or can I work out to get the best results? I have always done the 30-minute rule. Wait, eating after after eating a meal, yes. should I work out? So like we said earlier, at least 30 to 60 minutes, you really don't want anything in your stomach. And that's at least, I would say the wait at least an hour because you're not digesting it in 30 minutes. And if you eat a bigger meal, I would say wait two hours. Yeah. Wait until you don't feel like you have like food sitting in your stomach because especially if you're doing anything that's jumping around or squatting, you know, kind of a really big belly, like it's just not, I mean, big because you're full, <laughs> it's just not going to feel good. Yeah. Find yeah. what works for you. This is a common question and I'm, I'm not always sure why because this is a personal preference. Um, but yeah, if you have food in your belly, you're going to cramp up. One question related to this, how soon after after the workout should I eat? A lot of people talk about a 20 to 30 minute window post workout, but there actually isn't scientific evidence to support that theory either. So as long as you eat protein and carbs post workout within the next few hours, you'll be just fine. But we for the average person, yeah, not we, for athletes, for the average person. But if you are scheduling your meals or eating every few hours, I always think it's great if say you eat at 8 a.m. or 6 a.m. Say let's say 6 a.m. You go work out at 8. And then you can come home and eat like your breakfast or whatever, your second breakfast. All right, Yasmin says, are there any supplements you advise or encourage taking, casein, CLA, or any fat burners, et cetera? Great question. This is one we get all the time, all the time. And if somebody says that you need supplements to reach your goals and they are the trying way. to steal <laughs> your money, okay? It's true. They Seriously, just want your money. run. Because they just want you to buy their stuff, yes. okay? You don't need any supplements. Um, there are some that, you know, the only okay. one that's, convenience is a factor yeah. mm -hmm. if you're traveling or you have a busy work schedule then you may want to consider supplementing just because you don't have time to make you know healthy meals all day every day so in that case yes just look for ones that don't have fake sweeteners or unnecessary additives in them and you should be just fine um, as far as like fat burners no you don't need them mm -hmm. the only thing that's been shown or proven to like seriously help is fish oils Mm -hmm. But even that, I don't know. Um, yeah, and fat burners often are just a lot of caffeine. Uh, so if you're already drinking coffee and then taking a fat burner on top of it, you might want to reconsider. It's a lot of caffeine a day. It's going to stress your adrenals. Yeah, and... they say no more. I mean, generally, no more than two cups of coffee a day. And then if you're having a fat burner on top of that, like you're going to be wired and then you're going to be tired. You don't <laughs> need to worry about casein. Casein is good. There's um, definitely evidence to support that helping, but that's more in very athletic populations, people like professional athletes, bodybuilders, things like that. So um, as far as the average Joe no, or Jane, no, you don't really need to worry yeah. about taking casein. It, again, it comes back more to consistency and dedication to your plan and eating a lot of plant-based also eating real food so if you need to have a shake go for it but we want you to eat real food and not something that was manufactured somewhere so yeah that's our philosophy Save your money. we don't ever <laughs> take any of that but occasionally we do eat bars and a sponsor of this challenge this month is rise bar they're great they're all natural ingredients mostly organic non-gmo Awesome bars, and some of you might have the chance to win some because there will be three lucky winners at the end of the challenge. And again, that's just something if you're hungry and you're on the go or traveling, you can take with you as an easy snack. It's the same though with bars. You always want to make sure you're looking for ones that have minimal ingredients. No and fake sugars. No fake sugars. Um, no hidden stuff in there that your body isn't designed to process. So I think that about wraps it up as far as the Facebook questions. I hope nobody um, tried to chat because I never saw any chats here. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see though. If Just hold else. on for five minutes. So I thought gonna, you had it up for a second. I don't know. 
Do, would you this like is our first one, so excuse the technical difficulties. <laughs> someone, this cracked me up. If you're watching this video, someone commented today on one of Sarah's smoothie videos that her dimple is so deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I have a deep dimple. I, I mean, it's pretty deep, but I'm not gonna lie. I've had it since I was little. I always and forever. I used to have them on both sides, and when I was little, people would go like this to me. <laughs> Maybe that's really? why this one's so <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> Our uncle would do that. Okay, uh, let's see. If I want to any it. other burning questions, post them in the Facebook group right now while we're live. And Can I listening. tell them? I once dared her to put a straw wrapper in there and see if she could hold it, and <laughs> she did. It's true, it's true. She did. She held it. I took a picture of it. You're and I told her that she's never allowed to post that anywhere. Okay. Right? It's black male for sure. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Right. Okay, uh, let's see. What is this? Mm, I, I think know. that's good. I think we should wrap it up. That's like almost an hour. All right. Well, ladies. We're yeah, so happy to have you joining us. And you will get a new workout next Monday, a.k.a. tomorrow. <laughs> so watch out for it. And we will also be sending out details for how to win prizes and all that jazz. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Wait, there's seven crowns. Oh, okay. Oh, we, I forgot to return. I'm glad. I forgot to return to her question about breakfast. Breakfast options, we always load up on fruit because fruit is fast energy. It is hydrating and it starts your day off in a really clean, non acidic we got, way. We got a couple of good questions. I want to answer these. Hannah, thanks for saying that. Wait, can I finish this question first? <laughs> Jeez, I'm trying to help the sister out, okay? I'm sorry. I didn't know you were saying something. No, I'm helping her out because she said she ate. If I remember correctly, bread with cheese or Nutella. And whoa, hold up. I got to just put the smack down on that breakfast because that is not nutritious at all. <laughs> no, Try to get more real real foods in there. Like um, you could do egg scrambles, those frittatas again, or like pre bake your eggs or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, lots of fruits and veggies, as many as you can. And then, yeah, you want, you want to get carbs and protein and maybe a little bit of fat to get your day going. Okay. So. Hannah says that she can't get the chat to work. Sorry that it's not working. We'll look into it for next time. Because um, we do also want to maybe start doing these more often. Um, she has a question. She says, I know we need protein to build muscle, but besides the obvious natural animal protein, chicken, fish, etc., which protein powder or supplements do you recommend since our body can only intake so much at one time, which allows the highest intake of protein grams? That's a great question. Well... Uh, the best time to consume protein is post-workout. So that wasn't really a question, but that's an added <laughs> bonus. <laughs> also, the easiest, most fast-absorbing way to get protein is via powders. Whey protein mm -hmm. is, but that is an animal product. So um, it's more soluble, though. It, it's quicker digested. So, so you can get any, you know, plant-based hemp, yeah, so hemp protein powder, rice powder. There's brown rice. There's pea. Uh, I don't know if we're missing anything. I forget what else, but... Um, but again, we always go back to eating real food, and instead you could eat some eggs or some... What else? Tempeh. Tempeh, we love. Beans. Tofu occasionally is okay. Beans. Um, quinoa. Quinoa has quite a bit of protein, but edamame. beans and quinoa and even adamame have quite a few grams of carbs, so... You just want to balance them out. Exactly. Um... About Time is a brand that a lot of um, vegetarians and vegans really like, so you might want to look into that for yourself, but I'm not saying... I don't think that's vegan. That's way. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm well, I'm not saying not. that they're the best by any means. I don't have a preference. But and anyway. while we're on the subject of protein, Jennifer says, is protein good for us? Please tell me. Some people tell me yes, and others tell me no. Well, they will always it's tell you that because they're trying to confuse you so that you buy their stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here's the deal. Yes, protein is necessary. Uh, it has amino acids that your body cannot make itself. So you definitely need protein in your diet. The question comes how much um, for you. And that is something that's beyond the scope of this conversation. It, it's That's like sports nutrition coaching. Um, yes, but the general, what is it, RDA recommendation is half a pound for every... You better look that up before you go on No, it's true. It's half a half of a gram of protein for every pound you weigh. So say if you weigh 150. That's, that's the RDA though. Those are like federal guidelines, which we don't yeah. always agree with. Nope. 
but I'm just giving them information. Um, typically for women, anywhere from like 50 to 70 or 80 grams. I think more of the question with this question comes down to the type of protein that you're eating. Um, so if you have like protein powders, a lot of them have disgusting additives. And here's something that they don't tell you is that they're not regulated by the FDA. So they can put whatever the heck they want in those powders and they don't have to get it approved. There, there's no like fact checking as far as like, is what's in the, the tub actually what's written on the label. No one really knows. It's kind of, it, it's actually criminal. I don't think it's safe yeah. at all. I, it's really That's kind of why you choose to stay away from those products. And again, getting our protein from real foods and there's common misconception that if you're vegan, you're not getting any protein, but guess what? Fruits and veggies and greens, all of that quinoa have protein in them, so. You just have to eat way more of those things to yes. get the same amounts of protein, so. And I think people are always shocked at that um, when you switch to more of a plant-based lifestyle or you are eating more of that because you eat a lot. You eat a lot of food. You're eating all day. <laughs> <laughs> you're not eating all day, but you're eating more in you're one sitting. Large, meals. but it's a lot of fiber and water. So often you're not. It as, doesn't sit in your stomach. Exactly, you're not as full for as long. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You kind of actually want things to move through you and not be sitting there. And, yeah, because when they sit there, and you may have noticed this, if you increase your protein intake with like powders or whatever, it sits in your digestive system you may longer. Maybe a little gassy. And that causes gas and other bloating, you know, yeah. just gross feelings. I don't feel great when I eat a ton of protein. Yeah, there's and there are some that I can't even eat at all, like that triple blend one you used to. Oh, sense. that has casein. So I think she's oh, allergic to that. No, uh, she doesn't <laughs> get bloated and gassy. That's me too. But whoa, tone it down. This is too much. I'm never doing this again. You're out I just say no. If it's totally you cannot normal. be on the live cams, can you? Yes, I can. I keep it real. I'm posting a dimple pic. I'm <laughs> posting it. You better watch yourself. Keep it real. Okay. We all do that. I'm just saying. I that's think that's cool. good. I think that's pretty much it. And so, sorry that you guys are getting no broadcast. We see on the thing that it says bad broadcast, but we don't know yet how to fix that. So we'll. Post oh wait, this video. hold on. One more question. This is a really good one. Breakfast suggestions, and do you think low carb is a good idea? And what about treat days? Okay, first of all, breakfast, we kind of already went over that one. So if you want to just rewatch, we give a few suggestions, kind of give you our general recommendations. Uh, and low carb, this is a big one right now with paleo, what are the other ones? Adkins, just generally low carb. Uh, <laughs> and we say our opinion is no. Uh, we, you need carbs to function, especially as a woman, because we have all these processes going on and your monthly cycle, a lot of people lose that when they do low carb and they feel tired and groggy. And our experience with it was that we were so tired because we did low I carb. I couldn't think straight. I, I was like focus. in a fog and I was so tired. I couldn't when do you're, anything. It's the, te the technical term is ketosis. Your body goes into ketosis when it doesn't have um, enough carbs and that means there's a lot of free floating ketones in your blood which takes away from your brain mm -hmm. function yeah. so your brain has to actually convert fat to use it for energy for you know it's functioning and it's it's a lot longer and more in-depth of a process and not as easy yes. as those like quick carb sugars that it can just like mm -hmm. and more importantly is the type of carbs you're eating make sure you stay away from really processed or fine white carbs sugary carbs um, Get and your carbs from fruits and veggies. Back to the same thing. We've said it over and over, plant-based, fruits and veggies, and you're good to go. Um, also, eat, the other things like quinoa, quinoa yeah. brown rice. The thing with fruit and veggies, Sweet you can potatoes. really eat whatever, as much as you want. If it came from the earth, it's probably good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good for you. It's doing your body so much good. You don't even know it. Um, and then what about treat, treat days? days. Uh, this <laughs> is another one we don't really believe in because we like the way that we eat. And every so, day is a treat day if you're eating the right foods. So many people have this whole treat or cheat meal day or whatever, just a meal or a day, but they go overboard. They're like restricting themselves all week. And then that one meal or day comes around and it's like full blown, I'm gonna eat donuts and cake and pizza. And that's just not, again, something that's a long-term solution. You wanna find a way of eating that you enjoy, you look forward to every single day and not something that you feel like you need a treat meal to like escape your normal diet. I don't know, I think this has worked for some people and if it works for you, then that's great, then keep doing it, girl. But I think for us, yeah, we don't, we 
We don't label it as that because we don't. It starts to turn food into good and bad again, yeah. and we want to stay away from that because all food is fuel, and that's how we see food. So do we eat pizza and ice cream? Yeah, occasionally if we feel like it or if it's somebody's birthday. I mean, I don't actually eat ice cream. I ever. hate ice cream. <laughs> we don't say, but occasionally I will eat pizza. My boyfriend loves pizza, and he eats it pretty often. So if he has some, I might just have a slice and then have some salad with it. So I'm like balancing it. And again, that's not all the time. That's occasionally we don't restrict ourselves in that sense. There's no like schedule of like, yeah. Oh my God. I have Once to wait till Saturday at noon because I'm going to get that cinnamon roll. Like it doesn't turn into that. That's yeah. just not, this is not how we want to live our lives being a slave to food like that. So if it works for you and you feel like you're not a slave to your meals, mm -hmm. then great. And they always say the 80, 20 rule, that's kind of what we live by 80% of the time, eat as many fruits and veggies and healthy foods. And then 20% of the time you can have cookie or whatever you want, you know, a cookie. A cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what we go by. And again, we're not like super strict on that. Most of the time we just eat what we want. All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, any other burning questions? Let's see. Here we go. We got well. We got like five more minutes. Uh, that's about it. Okay. I don't see anything else. Well, you're welcome, ladies. This is our gift to you in the new year. We really want. We're here for your success. We don't get paid for these overtime hours. You know what I mean? We don't get paid for many of this stuff, actually. Yeah. So if you buy our ebooks, that is an amazing gift from you because that is helping to support us being able to do these things, um, you know, free of charge. And we want to continue to do that so we can help as many women as possible. This is true. So please tell your friends, get them to sign up for you. Registration closes tomorrow. So it's the last chance that they'll have to join us for this next 30 days. And then we'll ramp up and get ready to go this week. You're still doing routine number one and you'll get the yoga. And again, like we said, you could add in weights, make it more intense or add another round or set of them. Uh, and make sure you're getting your walks. Go on a walk or do something for 20 to 30 minutes every day. Stay positive. Talk to yourself in a positive voice. Tell yourself you're not tired. You can do this because yes. you can do this. You and you can. are doing it. So go you. Go us and let's <laughs> go together. Okay. Bye. Bye. Make sure you subscribe.